Well, it's time for the next video. We're starting the uh, this is the opening segment for uh, uh, Friday, October second, two thousand and twenty. Yeah, it's just about six forty-six. Not that much time between, but again, we are running on a twenty-four hour clock. That's uh, the way we operate here. Uh, I will be taking some breaks in a bit. Uh, I'll, I'm going to have some, actually, lunch and dinner. And of course, at this time, lunch and dinner is probably just, is just going to be a bowl of cereal. Uh, breakfast for dinner. Uh, too tired to have anything else. At this point in time, my body is exhausted. It, it's just simply pushed to, to its limit. Uh, and I don't want to have anything big, so... But then again, uh, on Wednesdays and Fridays, there's no meat, so, uh, because there is a, uh, a bit of fasting going on, a, a fasting meditation goes on. And so that's, that's how we end up where we end up. And of course, this is going to be a pitiful opening video because uh, my mind is tired, I'm, the, the thoughts aren't coming to me, the conversation's not coming to me. And I'm stumbling through things. I am thinking about uh, how the YouTube show before it came here, before I came to the uh, research desk to do the gaming and the meditation. That I was watching the good bits on the YouTube stroll, and they're they're part of the uh, Yahweh vlogs path. And as I said before, you can with with a good uh, YouTube stroll, a, a sort of setup. You have a, a, a fair amount of watching that you can do, and what was, was it on? Uh, I was watching Briley Ann's channel. Uh, she's with uh, uh, Family Five Vlogs, and she was watching uh, Love Island. People love the reality shows; they want to see the reality, the how people were interacting in these various different situations. Well, that's what a vlog is, and this is this is for me. There is no competition between Love Island. Which is somewhat scripted. There is a script to it, and they reshoot things, they re 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 edit things, and uh, but in a vlog, there is nothing like that. In vlog, in a vlog, you're seeing the person as they, particularly as they are. Uh, some vloggers do uh, do the movie thing or the reality TV show thing where they reshoot or reenact things, but on the whole, you see largely what the person is. And so if you're interested in personality, if you're interested in reality TV, then the vlog is where you want to be. And you have all different types of people out there that you can go take a look at. If you want cars, you can get cars. You want to go see a hunting program, you can see a hunting program. You, uh, you, know, you can go see hunters. You want to see fishermen, you can do f see fish. Uh, there are girls out there who are doing fishing, so they have their own uh, fishing channel just for girls. Or they have, uh, one I came across today was... Uh, a, a, a young uh, RVer. She must be about, uh, I think, uh, 18, 19 years old. She was working with her dad on the RV. And so you do have uh, a number of different choices out there, depending on what your interests are. Uh, I even found two, uh, I'm going to call them treasure hunters, because they collect stuff for the, they have these shops that they sell online, where they set up these sort of antique displays uh, for people who want them. My bit of interest is, is that is that what they find, how they find it, what's what's their, you know, why is what they've been finding not cataloged? You know, why aren't there more archaeologists out there looking for this stuff? And I think there are, there's a large, large hole in archaeology is that only a certain archaeology that fits the narrative is is, is uh, paid attention to, and everything else is kind of shoved on the side there. Uh, for me, it's not about. The sort of the narrative is about finding out the things that don't fit within the call it the standard model or the stand, standard narrative, and I'm seeing more and more of it that there is so much out there that was sort of simply glossed over or sim in many cases outright ignored that we can't just simply say, "Oh, there's nothing to see here," and this is all done from YouTube. It, it, it brings out a history that, in many cases, was not necessarily not necessarily known about. 
So it gives it gives a whole new opportunity to do uh, other forms of research, including archaeology and sort of uh, you know sort of uncommon archaeology. It's not in archaeology; it's just uncommon because no one really pays attention to it. Anyways, uh, that's it for the opening segment. I'll see you in a couple hours uh, for the uh, midpoint section. Probably that probably won't be until like. Eight nine o'clock, which will be uh, more than twelve hours from now. There'll be another uh, vlog. Well, actually, there's gonna be an unpacking vlog because I've got packages coming in today. So, well. It is about noon on October 7th is Friday and it is on packaging time uh, a couple packages came in so that's why we're here let's get to opening it there we go Oh. This is the uh, fourth item that I got. This is the the the, the, the uh, next sign is uh, uh, ice cube tray. Purple, a little smaller than the others. I have to check and make sure that I got the right size. So this is it here. Here's the. Uh, I got. Got to hold it for a second. You think it's. You think you're holding it okay in terms of the actual time, but uh, not quite. Uh, I notice sometimes that the uh, it it, it um, disappears from frame far too long. Uh, Far too quickly for uh, comfortable seeing. It has a lid, which I suppose could be good if you have like frozen treats and stuff like that. But usually, uh, I take the ice cubes out or whatever I'm going to be making, put them into a baggie, and leave them in the freezer like that. But that's not an issue. The second thing that came in was uh, two packages from Amazon, uh, and that's an immersion water heater. Here we go. Give me a few seconds to focus on this. Here you go. Immersion water heater. And that's from my new uh, bathtub that came in. And my standby, I refilled this jug again. The jug did come in. But uh, the rice snacks did. Uh, th these are the rice snacks that I, I like. I got uh, four bags. This is, this is two bags worth of, uh, worth of, worth of, worth of uh, uh, rice crackers. So, enjoying that and... Uh, up for gaming. I'm, I'm up here anyway, so I might as well do the gaming. It's just about time. Uh, I do the next bit of uh, meditation as well, and then uh, head back to bed. Anyway, that's how things go, right? Ended up going to bed at uh, at, uh, at uh, eight o'clock in the morning. That's when the time I finally finished. It is now noon, so I've had about maybe four hours worth of sleep, and then I'll go back. I get another four hours, so. Not too bad. Uh, whether I'm up or not depends on a number of factors. Anyways, it is 7 a.m. Oh, I like a quarter past. 
on Saturday, October 3rd, and we're going to end the vlog for Friday, October 2nd. And this is the way it is. It's a 24-hour day, and when I end it and when I start it, it really depends on a number of different factors. It's, uh, uh, I was sleeping, but I was woken up around 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I've been up since then. Uh, just kind of milling about and getting a little extra things done here and there because I couldn't go back to sleep. And this is typically what happens: is, is, is that I intend to sleep, I intend to get uh, you know at least a full eight hours, but it never works out that way. It typically something, even if things are going well, uh, there is something that interrupts the sleep that sort of uh, cuts it short. So typically, uh, my sleep breaks are between three and four hours, and then everything else comes in between that. <laughs> And then it's, but, but that uh, this is my this is my normal. This is what I'm used to. So uh, in many cases, it doesn't matter. I I, I adjust uh, how I do things. I adjust my life a, a, a accordingly. And it's not that I actually go anywhere because uh, there's nowhere for me to really go. Uh, I probably will be doing some vlogging trips with the scooter, but uh, not too much. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, but anyways, last night I I. I did much of my uh, YouTube stroll. I went off to the different paths. I got everything organized. Uh, and so I've got a good path to go on, but it just wasn't uh, feeling up to it. And so uh, after of doing some uh, work on my, on, my, on my tablet and, you know, not heavy work, but light work, uh, I just wasn't up to it. And so uh, I watched uh, uh, some cartoons, uh, prep, uh, basically Kim Possible. And then went to bed. It was around 2 o'clock in the morning that I ended up, ended up uh, shutting down. And it's, uh, four hours later, 6 o'clock in the morning, I was woken up and... I don't know necessarily what woke me up. I just was knew I was awake. And uh, then uh, I got up and started milling about and... Well, looked at the time now. It's uh, quarter past 7 and realized, hey... Uh, it's time for my gaming schedule, and of course, when the gaming schedule starts, so does uh, the meditation. Does the gaming and meditation kind of go together? It's the type of gaming that requires a certain degree of focus, and you can use the uh, the, the the prayers to to obtain that focus that you need uh, to uh, do the gaming. Oh, no, it's not an intense gaming like the way you have with any uh, called person versus person or PvP. This is more along the lines of a, of a slower, uh, more strategical game where strategy matters and more than the uh, person versus, versus person. And so it's your long-term strategy that matters. So uh, a med meditation does go along with it because it's not a fast-paced game. And that's kind of how I sort of work my way into things and this is sort of the nature of the beast, if you will, uh, that uh, I'll be going back to bed after this and see how many hours after that I can get. It's going to be a bit of a game, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I do have some cleaning left to do after today, and then uh, probably there will be a vlog tonight on the scooter because uh, I'll be going to my parents' house by scooter. Uh, my, my ankle is healed, so... Time to get back onto the road again, and I'll be trying out my new uh, seat on the scooter. Uh, it's significantly better than the last seat, and the post helps out a lot because uh, the old post wasn't sufficient for the road. It just kept bouncing around all over the place. It was very loose, even though it had been tightened into the uh, the the uh, structure of the post. The seat itself kept, you know, it, it was here's a seat, here's a post. It's on the seat, but it's got a round little thing uh, to, to keep it onto the post. So the seat itself would move back and forth as you rode. Uh, the new post that I have locks everything in place. It keeps it sturdy, so you, you don't have a move the motion of the seat the way you did in the uh, with the previous seat. So there should be a much better much better ride. Uh, there are much better springs on the seat, so uh, much better in terms of the shock absorption. So let's see when how this seat ends up working out in terms of the quality of the ride and. Uh, the stability of the road. So, 
of the scooter on the road. So we'll see when how that ends up working out tonight. 